through the infamous speck of clay on a potter's wheel. And the potter's wheel is spinning at 45 RPMs. And you're given that the diameter of the wheel is 30 centimeters. And so, yeah, we'll go ahead then and put this at the rim. Yep. So the speck of clay is at the edge of the circle. So first it just wants to know what is, what is AC. So I can remind myself that center seeking acceleration, well that is V squared over R. Let's see, what are we given? We're given rotations per minute. So that remind, remind I'm sorry, let me remind you that is 45 rotations, my tongue would not work, rotations per minute. This is a frequency, the time is on the bottom, so we have a frequency here. So let's see, let's go ahead and just turn that right into per second. So we can use this in terms of frequency per second. So let's see, I have in one minute, there's 60 seconds. And then I don't need the A either. Then I'm done, I have a frequency. So this is, let's see, 0.75 cycles in a second, or three quarters, however you want to do that. So I know what my frequency is, then let's label that. And then I know that we define velocity in terms of frequency is two pi RF. And I know I keep saying this over and over again, this is the distance covered in that circle. So this is the circumference of the circle times the frequency. Seconds is on the bottom, so that gives me a velocity. So it tells me how fast this thing is moving. So I have that. And we know the radius. Oh, no, we don't. Pay attention. Linda's tricky. I think that's what I heard you say. Well, your book is tricky. So I try to get you in the habit of seeing this, that they gave you diameter. So diameter is that. So radius is 30 divided by 2. And that's in centimeters equals 15 centimeters. There are 100 centimeters and one meter, and this needs to be in terms of meters. So let's see. The other one, we were going kilometers, we were going bigger. So there are 10 to the negative three. So one centimeter, one, two, whoops, 10 to the negative two meters, one centimeter. Make sure I'm doing that right. 100, yep. Yep, otherwise it'd be kilometers, that would be 10 to the three. All right, so we're 10 to the negative two meters and that got sloppy, let me make sure that's clear. Cool. So I have my radius is this, so we can rewrite it. Why am I smooshing everything over there? So radius is 15 times 10 to the negative two. Well, 10 to the negative two is just moving this decimal over two places, so 0.15 meters. Cool. So I have my radius, I have my velocity in terms of my um, frequency, and so this thing only asks for the center seeking acceleration. Huh, so all I need to do now is put all of those values in. So I get, let's see, let's see if we can't make this a little prettier. So I'll get AC, so my center seeking acceleration is V squared, two pi R F squared over R. Now write this out so you can see it. Four pi squared r squared f squared. That's the most forgotten f divided by r. That simplifies. So a center is four pi squared r f squared. I think this gets forgotten, 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 because we unsquare that because we cancel things out, and then we like ignore the poor frequency. So now we're ready, we just put in our values. We've done all the, the hard work. So four pi squared, R is 0.15 meters, sorry. And frequency squared, well that's 0.75 seconds to the negative one squared. And one of my double checks to make sure that everything is going right, let's see what units this gives me. This is meters. Seconds is going to be squared, so the seconds squared on the bottom is asking for acceleration. 
that indeed gives me units of meters per second squared, which is acceleration. So good, we did it right. That's how you can double check that. So unit analysis here is really helpful. Four times pi squared times 0.15 times 0.75 squared gives me an acceleration of 3.33 meters per second squared. That's it. So the second part of the question asks, what is the center seeking force? So pause this, what is the center seeking force? So let's think about it. Saying it's spinning this way. If, if I suddenly turned this into a sheet of ice, would this speck of clay still be hanging out there all happy like? And the answer is that no, is that if I remove friction, it has nothing to hang on to. So right now, friction is the only thing keeping it moving. It's accelerating it. So my force of friction then would be my center-seeking force. 